Welcome to the Mauer Museum. Uh, we have a program tonight on the history of the fire departments in Mawa. Before we get to our program, we're going to have a quick uh, general membership meeting to ratify the slate that will be presented by John Edwards for the members of the board for the next year. So John, as chair of the nominating committee, will you make your presentation? Sure. Good evening. Uh, the nominating committee wants to report the following. We had uh, two people that during the past year resigned, uh, Mike Kupfer and uh, uh, Mark uh, Foner. Mike has moved away. Mark is tied up with work and just is not able to devote the time that he wanted to. Uh, so our total was down two people from the total of 20 on the board. Uh, we also have six people that had terms that were up for renewal this year. All six have renewed. Jane Dewan, Tom Grissom, Tom Dunn, Diane Mateo, Rose Ellen Lorber Tremont, and Wade Morgan. Two of the terms of renewal are for one year, and the remainder are for three years. And we have one uh, new person uh, presented from the nominating committee to the board. Uh, who has not worked on the, on the board in the past. Her name is Cynthia Brennan. She's been quite involved with the college at Round Poe, and she also has been doing a lot of work with Tom Dunn in the archiving, and we thought she'd be quite a good asset to the, uh, to the board. So that's really my report. There's nothing else. So so if I, I hear a to motion accept to accept the nominee, Hetsu, a second for that motion, please. Second. Okay, all those in favor who are members of the museum, please uh, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Abstentions, the motion carries, that's the slate. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Okay, just uh, briefly, upcoming programs, uh, gallery talk on Sunday, April 19th, stagecoaches to one cent stamps. Actually, Carol modified that. Sorry, Carol, I have that right here. Mail on the Move in Mawa. Uh, that'll be on April 19th, 115th in the museum. And our final gallery talk is by Gail Dasha, May 17th, School Days, School Days. And uh, we have one more lecture uh, on May 14th here in this room, Thursday, May 14th, Mawa's Changing Railroad by uh, Robert Adler. And our neighborhood exhibit continues. And without further ado, we have an outstanding panel here that I want to present. Uh, we have uh, Bill Dater, we have Ike Wiley, we have Lee Collins, and we have Tom Dewan, who are going to talk to us about 100 years of Mawa Fire Department. Turn it over to you, Tom. Great. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> We know we're getting a little late, but uh, wake up. <laughs> so we say hello and uh, thank everybody for coming here to hear this lecture. Um, uh, we had a situation at the, uh, the firehouse on Monday when one of our members passed away. And uh, if we just have a moment of silence for John Kelly. Thank you. Um, that's really hard when you have, uh, you know, somebody in the department pass away, whether it be, you know, company one or company five, it doesn't make any difference. It, it's just, uh, it's a tough thing because, you know, we're all like a family. And I, <clears throat> as I continue, I just want to make mention, um, I want to thank just a couple of people that helped organize this. Uh, and it's not only just, you know, tonight, but it was for the whole year. Uh, we have a big timeline that we put together at the firehouse. Um, just numerous pictures that we kind of dig into the archives over at the museum. And a lot of help from a lot of people. And I would uh, feel bad if I didn't mention them. But uh, I want to mention uh, Kim Bolin, Brian Manger, who's not here, Josh, company member of firemen, and a special thanks to the museum people uh, that helped me with... Uh, a number of things over the year and trying to get things going with all their research and all their work 
because uh, it's not easy. When you go back 100 years, you know, unless somebody was living then, you know, it's tough to get the information. But, uh, you know, Charlie to the museum crew, uh, Carol Green, thanks a million for all your help. Um, I joined the fire department in 1982. As you can see, I'm the youngest one of this panel. <laughs> <laughs> and when Charlie asked me to, um, to do this program, I told Charlie, I said, you know, I got to think about it. Because I know if you say yes to Charlie right away, you're booked for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and in doing so, thinking about it, I uh, thought of some guys in the fire department, and these are the guys that I thought of. We'll find out, good or bad. <laughs> but truly, these guys are the guys that I, whenever I sit around and listen to stories, uh, Lee, you know, he's, he's, he remembers a lot of things. And uh, names and places and stuff, and, and perfect. And Bill and Ike, you know, I mean, how could it, better could it be than to have two guys that had a grandfather, their grandfathers that were on the, the, the charter of the Mawa Fire Department. So they'll talk about that as we go along, and I think it's, it's you know, it's great. But uh, everybody has a reason for joining the fire department. Um, community service, you know, helping people, you know, et cetera. Um, and I think that uh, basically, you know, that's what it's all about, helping everybody out, community service. Um, in my situation, I served as a vice president, a trustee, a delegate to the state convention, and presently, I'm secretary to the uh, exempt, Mama Exempt Association. And I still try to do an awful lot with the fire department and you know, keep things going like this. But I'd ask Bill if you would uh, just mention a few things. Okay, thanks, Tom. I guess, is the microphone working when it's laying down here? Yes, I guess. Uh, I joined the Mall Fire Department on March 5th, 1964. The reason I remember that date is that's the day I turned 21. And for my entire life growing up, I had my grandfather and my father who were both very active members of the fire department. I had, I had a couple of uncles and I had cousins. One of them is sitting up here tonight, uh, Ike Wiley. And that was just part of growing up in, in Malwa. We were, uh, the fire department was uh, had a, a social part of it, it was young Young kids, we'd go to the parades and suffer in Ridgewood. Um, can't say we hung around the firehouse, but what we did is, our, my father used to always, after a fire or something, he'd take me back and show me where the fire was. So I grew up wanting to join the fire department. I served in the fire department every position from secretary, president, battalion chief, rescue captain. Um, and I was writing some notes down here, and I, I almost it was notes to myself to remind me what to say, but I'll just had an office in town, run to the firehouse, answer phone, ride on board, jump on truck, put on gear, going down the road. Drive truck, drive ambulance, on call every eighth night. Sleep with clothes by bed, electrons big deal, had to depend on sirens. I was gonna expound upon that, but I just way it ended up writing it. It's sort of the early days of the fire department, and you'll see it as we go into tonight was, it, it's so changed from now, and it's changed for the better, but not to say it was bad when I joined, but for like the first 50 years of the fire department, it was always the same, where we had, the fire whistle would blow, we'd run out of our offices or our homes, we'd run down to the firehouse, we'd see where the fire was, uh, and pick up the telephone in the fire. Now we have, uh, we have a lot of, Modern, more modern gear and a lot of other things you'll see respond uh, to it. The other thing about the fire department is it's, it's a, been a social part of the community, whether it's be whichever company it is, one, two, three, four, or five, you'll find that the, the members there, their kids are members, and a lot of the friends that we make that I've been on for the last 50 years as a member of the fire department are the friends that I have now. And, um, and it's just that's the way it, way it, way it is. And as Pete, uh, as Tom, that's his name, Tom. Tom uh, Pete's out there. Pete's out there. Pete Meyer's out there. But we've just had a lot of friends and we just have kept it that way. So um, the only other part of, I was going to put down about uh, we had a lot of good times. Um, and 
I'll pick up on the rest of it as we go through, Lee. Right? Okay. Uh, I joined the department in 1967. Moved to Mawa with my family, my parents, my brother, myself, in 1947. And although my father was not a fireman, for some reason I was always interested in, in the fire. Fire trucks, firehouse, the whole bit. Uh, back when, the biggest thing that Company 1 had, they used to have a yearly carnival. And again, I'm seven, eight years old, so I thought this was like dying and going to heaven. Uh, became very, very involved with following the fire department. Uh, we have a board down here that we'll get into later, which the horn would signify two, one would be Alcott Road, okay, Miller and Alcott, so on. Uh, it was the kind of thing as kids, we, I guess we were a little nuts maybe, but uh, we listened and went, yep, oh, that's where it is, and we thought we were hot stuff. But it was a neat situation, as I say. I, I wasn't, I didn't join quite as early as Bill did. Uh, I, I went to school, graduated, got married, lived in Midland Park for several years, a few years, and then moved back to Mawa. Very honestly, I think half the reason, I can't tell my wife Jane this, but half the reason I moved back was the fire department. Uh, for whatever reason, I had this, I had this thing. And uh, 48 years later, still a, still a, uh, still a fireman, I'm very proud of it. Uh, ambulance Corps was, and we'll get into this too, but the Ambulance Corps back in the early days was is probably much more time consuming even than the fire department. It was a, an organization that was established in 1947, but we'll get into all this. But it was established in 47, and really, although it wasn't on the book books that you had to be a fireman to be an ambulance corps member, but it kind of, if you weren't, you were in trouble. Uh, so that was a, a good part. Probably 50, 75 percent of our time was dedicated to the ambulance corps at that point in conjunction with the fire department. Uh, Bill stole a lot of my thunder by saying how social it was and whatever, and also uh, I, I would totally agree. The social aspect of it uh, is, is super important. I think that's one of the reasons we have five very successful, thriving companies in town. Uh, we work hard, we play hard, and it's, uh, it's, it's a neat deal. Friends that we created in 67, I'm sitting next to the one, I'm sitting next to two, sitting next. we all, we're still very friendly, okay? We vacation together, we go down to Cape May together to the fireman's convention. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a neat group. We had tons of sigillates, as we call them, I'm not sure even why. But what that meant is we'd be there, we'd have a fire or whatever, and a few of us get together and we sit there. We have a little party tonight, so we call our wives. And that was the signal eight. It was wives, kids, I want to say dogs, and in some instances it probably was. But, but that's, they were impromptu, neat fun, and as I say, kept us together for all these years. Oh, tired old guy, my father. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just... <clears throat> Do I need that? Uh, I don't I've been uh, sort of forced, I didn't have any choice. One grandfather, charter member of Company One. Second grandfather, charter member of Suffolk Fire Department. Um, I rode in the parade on my grandfather's lap in the uh, 4th of July in 1940 on their Aaron's Fox aerial on my grandfather's lap. So it just, and my grandparents lived across, almost across from the firehouse. All my friends are firemen, and it, that's just it. You've got to do it. That's it. So that's the start of it. Okay. So now you can see why I chose these guys, right? So you're gonna. There's a lot of history. Um, you know, a lot of uh, things they're gonna tell us about. We have a PowerPoint presentation that we're gonna uh, show you. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, slides in the beginning. We're gonna. Uh, talk more about company uh, one, two, three, and four, and five. Um, you know, get some dates out there to you, and then as the the slide program progresses, it will go into the uh, trucks and some equipment and uh, 
and we'll try to keep it moving along, all right? So if I see anybody nodding, we're going to tap you on the shoulder. <laughs> Right. So the first slide that we have up here, as you can see, that's the first uh, building, the first firehouse in town. It was built back in 1929, and we're going to talk more about that in a, a few seconds. Um, this slide here, um, the reason we have this slide up here, this is the Miller Mansion, and that's the Owino Lake that is at the site of the Betsy Ross School right now. And um, the reason we have that is because they had a fire there. And this was back in uh, uh, 1899 when the uh, mansion actually burnt. But they had the, this guy, Colonel Ezra Miller, had the foresight to put this pond and build the estate right there so that if there was a fire, they could use the water. Unfortunately, the equipment that was used, some, one of the guests moved it out to the orchard, and when a fire happened in the servants' quarters, uh, it wasn't set up. And by the time they got it set up, things just weren't working right and stuff, and unfortunately it burnt. But I'm sure this is one of the contributing factors and one of the reasons, among other fires throughout the area, that they needed a firehouse and a fire department to uh, protect the people in their property. Okay, go ahead, Mike. This is the... Uh, it's the original of the incorporation papers for Fire Company Number One, that was uh, the group that started, that met in December of 1914, and they held their membership open until May of 1915 when they incorporated. The original members, I'm just going to read them off, and uh, some of these names, maybe you don't know, maybe some of them are just have been around here for a while. Charles Witter, Robert A. Smith, William King, Fred Tuliger. Warren Ackerman, Albert Winter, Erwin Tiedemann, Edwin Lane, Harry Hegeman, Howard F. Holman, Millard Cooper, Abram Valentine. Those are the original 13 that met. There's still some more that were on here. Matthias Carey, William Diedrich, Raymond F. Dater, my uncle Ray, Bill's grandfather. Uh, Raymond Edwards, Harry Jackson, Harold Johnson, Harry Stern, Frank Shore, Arthur Valentine, Richard Valentine, one's a brother of my grandfather and one's a cousin, uh, Louis Winter, Ira Whaley, W.D. Finch. Most of these people were the group around. They lived one, two, three, four, five, six of them lived on Hillside Avenue. Three that I know of lived on Franklin Turnpike, they lived on Olney Road, Lawrence Road, West Ramapo, Messenger, King Street, one on Armour Road. So basically the group around the firehouse, Company One. First chief was Millard Cooper, second house on the left on Hillside Avenue. The first, they didn't have a firehouse when they first started this thing. Cooper's garage was next to my grandfather's garage on Hillside Avenue. They put a roof between the two garages, and that became the fire, first firehouse. <coughs> the bell. Uh, first alarm system. It was in the, what it would be now the parking lot of company number one. It was on a platform. I'm not sure how they got, they were told, when there was a fire or who rang it, but that was the alarm system that they started with. This is the call list that's up on the wall. The, uh, when they got sirens and the air horn, they put this code system up so that you'd have an idea of where the fire was. One, two was center of town. Two was Cragmere, three was West Wall, four was Outlying Districts. And you just do with some of those. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, I, I apologize because I think a lot of this information, since this is the end of our 100th anniversary, a lot of this has been reduced to writing uh, the Mawa Matters, the publication, 
and various newspaper articles. So a lot of what I'm going to tell you, you're going to say, we didn't need to come listen to this and pay three dollars. We, we knew all about this stuff. So there will be some duplications. There's also going to be some duplications, some of the things Ike has already said, some of the things Bill has said. But just bear with the duplications because we're, we're a little slow. But we started in December of 1914. As Ike indicated, there were 13 members then. By the time they officially incorporated, which was early in 1915, there were 25 members, which we, you already know who they were. In 1918, we became part of the township fire, fire department. Keep in mind, all five companies started out as independents. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but we were all independents when we started. So as I say, in 1918 we came under the town. Prior to that even, we started having the construction of fire hydrants, and that was in 1915. One of the things, as Tommy indicated, that prompted that was the, the Miller Inn tragic fire. Okay, I say tragic, I don't think there were any lives lost, but there was a total loss of properties. The first truck that, we, that I spoke of that was housed on Hillside Avenue was a 1925 Buffalo Larrabee Hail. This was the first truck that the township bought for us. Prior to that, we had a truck. Unfortunately, we don't have any good pictures of the first truck, but it was definitely a used truck, but it served the purpose. In 1939, the first truck New truck was bought for, for company one, it was a 1939 Mac, and we had that for many, many years. But to go, uh, to go back a little bit, on the 1925 Larrabee pumper, that cost $7,385. Okay, let's get a little more current. 1929, as we indicated, the firehouse was, was erected. <coughs> Uh, and of course, as you people can see, although we've added on and added on, that, that building as it stands is, is still very much, very much uh, intact. That, again, houses number one's equipment. And number one is obviously fire. It's also heavy rescue. We also have a boat for rescue. Uh, it's a boat that some people kidded us about, it kind of looks like something you might find in the Everglades. Uh, but it has already been put to good use on several occasions. Uh, Superstorm Sandy, Irene, it was put to use, and, and we go all over, all over because we're part of the mutual aid. So all the companies in town and whatever have their role. But we have pictures depicting how we did some rescues, I think it was in Little Ferry. Uh, but it, it's not its not just for the township of Mowa. The Ramapo is a good example of it, okay? Um, but we have pumpers, we have the rescue truck, and of course we have a lot of auxiliary uh, equipment, pickup trucks and, and various uh, fire police vehicles. As far as number two is concerned, in 1928, now keep in mind this was Hence the numbers, obviously. But in 1928, two was formed, again as an independent. They had no firehouse any more than we did. They had a member who was their president, or became their president, a gentleman by the name of John Mayhawk. He had a garage on Rampo Valley Road, just kind of down from the MB and G, and he lent that to the department. So for several years, that was that was their firehouse. In 1934, they became members of the Mala Fire Department also. In 1949, number two got their first firehouse, which, as you can see in the picture, that was the original firehouse. And of course, you'll see future pictures that show that, you know, that was, uh, it's three times the size. But that was, that was their firehouse at that point. They also, of course, they specialized over, over and above the fire uh, situation, the hazmat. They had their own hazmat truck, they had their own hazmat squad, 
they also have two pumpers, and they also have two ladder trucks. And there's the picture, of course, showing the present firehouse. And rumor has it, and whether this is for publication or not, but rumor has it it won't be too long before that will be expanded again. But that's great. That's progress. So we're, we're happy to see that. Number, uh, number three. Excuse me. Can you go back a sec on that slide? What's the original structure? The, the, Tom, can the, you back up two, two pictures? Uh, two, that that one. Yeah, but what's the, in terms of the new building, is it? The, there, is it, you see those the windows all in the middle. Okay, that section there, the square yeah. one? Right. Thank you. Right. Okay, also, in 1928, the first siren, you might say, how oh, big deal, but the first siren was installed, okay? Uh, that was replaced by another siren, I don't know if it was defective or what, a few years thereafter. But that, the siren system was kept in place. Keep in mind, the siren replaced the bell. In 1946, the sirens were replaced by the horn. Now, most of us people that are as old as we are remember, remember the horn very well. It's still in effect today. Of course, virtually now every fireman has, a, has his own little gizmo on his belt and, and so on. So we don't rely totally on the page. page. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one of those toys. That's so the point. It's not easy working with these guys. That's why I'm running the computer. Okay. All right. Company number three was Masonicus Firehouse. Yeah, there's, there's a pager that uh, the young guys have them and need them. They give them to the old guys just to make them feel wanted. Okay? <laughs> but, uh, and I'm really kidding. Ike, Ike, although he's older than Mud, is still super active. All right? Ike, Ike's our best radio man, and that's for the entire town. That's not just company one. So I am I'm totally kidding about it. These guys have them and use them. Uh, if you don't use them, you won't, you won't have them for long. Okay, Company 3, we're depicting that, that barn, which to my knowledge still exists, and I meant to pass it, but I think it still exists. It's on East Crescent. It's not far from where Apple Ridge Country Club is, and it sits back off the road. That was a barn lent by Joe Rosansky, who was one of the brothers, uh, Farmer Brothers up, uh, up in Masonicus, but he lent that to Company 3 as their firehouse. A few years later, the town gave or let them use whatever, the what's known as the old schoolhouse, which was on Masonicus Road down in that gully. It's, it's now, uh, I, I believe it's a temple, okay. But, so here's a picture of, of the, the fire, uh, the firehouse that's a loner. Uh, okay, this is this is the old schoolhouse they added on to accommodate a truck, and that's the one on Masonicus Road on you know the big hill. They had that for about seven years, and then they went to their ultra new building on Rosansky Lane. <coughs> that's the building that they they constructed in '75, and it's still very much in use today. Uh, it's, it's probably a, I, I would guess, I don't know if, as, as a fact, but the fact that it's called Rosansky Lane, my suspicion is the land was donated to the town for the, for the, fire, for the fire department. Keep in mind, and, and I'm not sure exactly why, but very often there were a lot of years between the independent fire companies and the time they saw the light or smoke, whatever they saw, and they joined the company, the town, okay? Half the reason, my guess is, was with dollar reasons, because they could better afford to get us the equipment that we needed. Prior to this, it was fun drives and things of that nature. But the Company 3, Masonicus, formed in 47, didn't come into the town for 21 years, 1968. So for some reason, they must have fought it a little, and you know what? Probably for real good reasons. But anyhow, that's where it was. In 1956, all right, they moved to the old schoolhouse, and then they moved to this in 75. All right. Company 4, which is known as the Fardale Fire Department, okay, 
came in, into existence as again as an independent in 1944, remained an independent until 1970. At that point, they had they created their own firehouse, and you see the firehouse being depicted there. Off off to the left was part of the old schoolhouse, and they had moved that. Now you people can visualize it. The current firehouse is almost directly across the street from George Washington School. They moved that across the street and then added the bays to make uh, make room for the fire trucks. I what was say. interesting on that is my father-in-law, George O'Lear, was chief, and he was one of the ones that directed how to move that across. Okay. Number number four specializes in tank operations. They also have a pumper. They also have a ladder truck. Number five, the last comment. We got. Uh, go back, Tommy. One. Yeah. Go back one more, a little bit. You see, uh, on the left, there's a little building in front of the firehouse. Company four, when they first got in, was complaining about they didn't have the right office space for the chief and things like that. So. You go to the next slide, Tommy. One night they got some, next one, there we go, back there. They had, we delivered an office to them, a prefabricated <laughs> office, especially for two. It was for the chief and his helper. They could both sit side by side and do their office work and contemplate different things. So there, a little bit of playback, back and forth between some of the companies. Okay, company number five, which is known as the Stag Hill Fire Department, formed in 1961. They became part of the town in 1978. This firehouse was part of the old schoolhouse and whatever, they remodeled, I don't say anything schoolhousey about it, but they, they remodeled the facility to make it, you know, to handle the, the fire trucks and, and all the equipment they needed. Uh, number five has, has, and still to this day, has a bit of a unique situation. It's real hard for any of the other companies to get to. So if there was anything really serious going on there, by the time, you know, one, two, three, four got there, my gosh, terrible things could have happened. They had no hydrants, so they needed tanker trucks, and that's kind of kind of their specialty. Uh, so they have, uh, they, it hasn't replaced the hybrids by any stretch of the imagination, but they have a tanker, they also have a pumper. They have a, and they have a, a pumper and then they have a mini pumper. So they, they certainly perform a good function, there's no question about it. We can get there, the roads have improved. It used to be, back, back when it used to be known as, what well, still is, Geiger Road. And Geiger Road was almost the only way to get there. Some of the older guys said that they used to, the best way to get there really was through Hillburn. So it made it, it made it pretty darn difficult. Here's a picture of, of one of their tanker trucks, which again is put to good use. I don't know exactly how old that is, but it's relatively new, to say the least. Okay. To explain, and I think most of you people probably know, but Mawa Fire Department, although it consists of five companies, we have one elected chief. We have two elected assistant chiefs. They're elected by their peers, but all companies vote on these people. My knowledge, it's a one-year term, but kind of, although it's not written, very often it's a two-year, it becomes a two-year term. They have to be elected a second time, but it's a two-year maximum term. And some, with some of our older chiefs, they, they were in for more than, more than two years. But currently, I guess to make it fair and get new blood and whatever, it's two years. Each company has their, now we're all government. I mean, the chief is the chief, all right, for the entire town. Each company then has their own officers. They have their own battalion chiefs. They have their own, rest, well, in our case, we have a rescue captain. But they're, they're captains, they're lieutenants. So they run the internal workings of the individual companies. But again, all under, all under one chief. Okay, in 1947, Company One formed the Ambulance Corps. We had, uh, excuse me, Tom, can you get back to the truck, uh, to the 
the boy chief, the, no, the white, the, you know, uh, maybe, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around. You jump. But I just wanted to show a picture of the, the original ambulance, but it doesn't, we, we'll see it. But anyhow, it's, it's, it's a white, white Cadillac, and, and we had it in 1947, and it was a big to-do uh, when they burned uh, the paper on it, basically, in 1951. This will happen once in a while where everybody will lose their place so just bear with it, all right? <laughs> uh, some of us, uh, yeah, that happens. Too uh, bad for you, Tom, but that's all right. Uh, okay. This this is a uh, picture in the uh, in our party room in the firehouse that in 1942. That's the generation that was uh, two or three of those were they were chief. In the 30s, 40s, uh, I don't know if some of the, the names ring a bell. Ackerson, uh, Charlie Morris, a couple Ackersons, and uh, that's the group that was active in the 40s, 30s and 40s into the 50s. Jack Glasgow. Mm -hmm. This is the same place. This is a group. This is the next group. The uh, in-between group, uh, the oldest one in that group joined in 1950, that's Harry Green, and the rest of us, 60s, 70s, and 80s, basically. This is the current group of active young guys, we'll put it in. These pictures were taken last year, both groups, when we had a series of parties to celebrate the 100th anniversary. Excuse me, you have a lot more pictures, because if you do, you should turn the lights off. You can probably see what's going on. Can you see? Yeah, let's, why don't we turn that off? Sorry. It's almost all pictures. Turn it. Yeah, that's not interesting. That's, thank you. That's good. Uh, thank you. That's the current new group. Some of them are here. Uh, it's the young... The young guys. Or we'll show you this one again because we're all in this one here. <laughs> That's the uh, the middle group. Some of the now it's the old guys, but we're still most of us are still active with young group. All right, this picture was taken of Company One in 1946, I believe Fourth of July parade with the returning servicemen acting as color guard. And that's company number one. Company number two, same parade. Uh, I know a couple of people, some people might be able to get out some more, but that's company number two going to the same parade. This is companies one and two. In 1962, 4th of July parade, uh, it's just before I joined. Notice the equipment, all the, the members in there, some of them, I don't know if anybody's still around, none of, none of the officers are, but those are the three pieces of equipment that we had in 1962. Power wagon, the Mac, and the Mac that was in Company 2. The one, that Mac from Company, uh, which Mac is down in uh, Florida? Florida. Not That's R39. This is a group that met, they had a little dinner to celebrate the burning of the mortgage that they had for the annuals when they started the annual score. It's held at Schwartz Tavern down on Route 17, Schwartz Restaurant on Route 17. That's a group in the late 40s, early 50s. It was the fire company. Next. That's the annual score. In that same era, maybe a little bit later, uh, Alan Dixon, captain. I don't know if you know some of the people. Harry Breen, still in that picture. Frank Ackerson. Not too many. Most of those people are here. This, so signifying, some of this is signifying the change in the Mawa Fire Department. The Bergen County Fire Academy 
19, November 1st, 1965. That's the first, the uh, graduation exercises, the first graduation exercises from Vernon County Fire Academy. That fire academy opened, and that's really started the change in the Mohawk Fire Department. Uh, you'll notice this is the graduates from company number one, went to the first course, very tough course. It uh, taught us a lot about our equipment and the way we fight fire and the way we work, and uh, things started changing based on that. Uh, I'm on the bottom of the list down there. 24 hours, that was it, eight nights, first course. The current course, my grandson just finished the first firefighter series right now. Uh, I can't read, it's not, it's uh, 200, about 200 hours for firefighter one, and he did firefighter two also with it, another 90 hours. The course. I think it's what, two, I, excuse me. I think it's two. I could be wrong, but I think it's two fifty combined, bro. And then, yeah, I think it's one ninety. But anyhow, it's a lot of hours. That's for sure. The change. What's changed in some of the since the fire academy started and since we first went to the first part of that class. One of the things we've always gotten. We started the training stuff. When Company One got into the uh, rescue, <coughs> taking on some of the rescue capability as sort of an adjunct from the ambulance and the fire, this is the first group that went down to the State Police Rescue School in Hamilton, New Jersey for a 40-hour heavy rescue course. Uh, see, I'm in it. Lee is in it. Bill's in it. Uh, some of the other, you might, Ken Waring, who was a teacher in the school, says Pete Myers here. Uh, Jamie Dater. That's the group, first group that went to the rescue school down in Hamilton. There's rescue captain, Bill Dater. All right. Here okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I was chief. So. What year was that? 1976. There's the uh, company one going to another parade. We're, that's with uh, the La France. I believe, yeah, the La France. In our parade uniforms. The red shirt. And at that time, Ken Waring had a couple of dogs, Dalmatians, and it was a lot of fun. The parade. That's another group. Duger Jones had a Model A, Model T. Chief Scar, that he had of his own, his own, and we used that, paraded with that in 1976. The other, some of the other things, Tommy? Yeah, there, there are a number of programs that go on in town. This happens to be the 9-11 ceremony that we do every year. The, um, it's, it's Lisa DiGiulio organizes this, and of course the fire department is there, as you can see. Um, and it's the exempt association that sets up all those flags that you see out there every year that, that represents the uh, fatalities, the deaths of the firemen, policemen, and emergency medical technicians. You know, and it's, it's just one of the programs that we were involved in. And this, of course, is um, our Memorial Day <coughs> Parade. And, uh, you know, this is a, it's a great, great parade, and, and it, it brings the town together. And I can't believe, over the course of these last number of years it's grown. I mean, we, the center of town there, the uh, Veterans Park that's been, you know, renovated and, and it's just, it's a beautiful place and the, the flags that are up there now and the, the monuments that were there, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a great day and the parade has been going on, boy, as far as I can remember. And it's a wonderful day. This is our second fire truck, and I need. We just need. We need a light here. I got it. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna need something here. Uh, 
we're starting to go through some of our equipment. We don't have a picture of our first engine, but this is the, uh, the second one. It's a, a uh, 1925 Buffalo Larrabee pumper. And we lost some of our company records uh, early. The secretary's house burned down, and we lost our the start of the records. But we have some back, this is 1930, the Buffalo Larrabee fire truck, one Larrabee fire truck, equipped with 500 gallon per minute pumper, two 40 gallon chemical tanks with 150 feet of chemical hose, thousand feet of two and a half inch fire hose. Uh, just very simple. Three rubber coats, six helmets, and two pair of rubber boots, one pair of goggles. We were, uh, the equipment at the fire headquarters, sulfuric acid and an acid pump and soda. The booster tank on this was run with that soda acid. They put water in the booster tank with bicarbonate soda, and when they wanted to fight a fire, they had to dump sulfuric acid in it or a propellant to put out the fire. Bill, do you have something on that? Yeah, I did some research and I found a, uh, an article in the uh, newspaper talking about the, uh, the firemen were at the town council meeting and they were trying to, this is what they said. Uh, it said, as the soda is mixes with the soda, a solution is formed which is effective as fire extinguisher. The trouble with this method said Mr. Clark, is that the acid damages the paint on the truck, the clothing and shoes of the firemen, and the material on which it is used. So if you can just picture, they're dumping sulfuric acid, and they're not only putting the fire out, but they're also doing damage to the fire truck and the equipment and the clothing. So what they're asking for is they were asking that we get a different type of truck or of system, which was a new method that was going to use carbon dioxide, gas, and water which eliminates the damage caused by the present extinguisher. So those of you firemen that are here, we've come a long way since uh, that, that request was in the uh, mid-20s, I guess. Back, as an aside with this, the group that was in that 40s picture took it on their own and changed the tank. They went out and started doing some engineering themselves and took the engine apart and changed the tank so that it would run through the pump. Uh, from I just some, some old stories that one night they came down and uh, Jim Devine, who was the mayor, was looking at it. There's a fire truck all apart, and it's like midnight. I said, "What are you guys doing?" I said, "We're changing the pump." I said, "Well, you know, what are we doing now? What are you going to do?" He said, "Don't worry about it. We'll be here till it works." And they did. They changed it around. So that's it. Next. First new pumper, uh, 1939 Mac, which uh, 750 gallon pumper, hose, equipment, boots, helmets for everybody. Everything on the truck. Everything on the truck, Indian tanks, you notice on there, and a booster tank, it ran through the pump. Everybody rode, still rode on the outside or on the back. That truck is still in the uh, Company 4 firehouse. Company 4 still has that truck. 1956 Mac, starting a different type of pumper, went to 1,000 gallons and 1,000 gallons of water. Two booster lines to uh, hopefully put out some fire. There's another one, same truck, a little different view. That's the power wagon that we got. Uh, 300 gallons of water, 500 feet of booster reel for fighting brush fires. It also had a foam proportioner on it that you could put foam out with these. So we had pre-connect inch and a half on the back. The first basic pre-connect that we had that was pre-connected on purpose to fight fires, inch and a half. 
This is the uh, 1969 American LaFrance pumper, engine 115. We got two of these at once. Uh, company one and company two. It's time to go modern. We've been to fire school. It's time for air packs. The original Mack and the Dodge had each had two air packs on it in boxes up on the top of the vehicle. You got to the scene, you took the box off and put the air pack on. These were mounted uh, for the jump seats and for the guys who were on the back step, they were on the side to put it on. It's a Han, another 1,500-gallon puffer. 117 are still in service. It's another 1,500-gallon pumper. This one also is equipped with, for rescue backup for Company One. Our current newest engine in Company One, uh, fifth, engine 115, 1,500-gallon pumper. Everybody rides inside now. No more back step, none of this stuff. Everybody's inside all the vehicles uh, for safety purposes and. Everybody's got it's every seat's got an air pack, so you're ready to get your gear on, get on the engine, and ready to fight fire when you get off. What year did you get that? Uh, Pierce is a got some help, guys. 2008. 2008. Now we're into some of the rescue stuff. This is our original ambulance that Company One bought with. Back in the old days, the that, first one. That ambulance was purchased uh, was purchased for four thousand five hundred eighty-five dollars. Come, they've come a long way since. Yeah, uh, as you can see, it was a Cadillac, and, and in those days, we really didn't have a, a self-contained unit. You know, the trucks basically that we now have. We had this, and we had at least two or three more Cadillacs. I happen to have been the, uh, on the committee that bought the last Cadillac. The next one we went to was a truck, basically. And we've never gone back. That's, that's the route to go. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Okay. The All right, you. Bill? No. This was a uh, rescue truck, the first rescue truck in the... Uh, uh, Law Fire Department, and it was bought from the Civil Defense, uh, founded for us in Jersey City. We went down to Jersey City, we bought it. Uh, I forget what we, the Civil Defense paid for it. We brought it back to Moa, and we spent about six months refurbishing it. It was, uh, we sanded it all down, primed it, painted it ourselves, uh, did all, most of all the work ourselves. And this is a picture of the uh, uh, chief and, and uh, uh, who is that? It's uh, Don Gilmore and Pat Malone presenting the keys to the rescue truck to the Mayor Nyland. One of the first calls we had when, after we had that truck was there was a tragic accident on Rampo Valley Road where three cadets from West Point were going back to, uh, or four cadets I guess, were going back to school on a Sunday and they were speeding down the road and they hit a tree mm -hmm. and uh, three of them were killed. And uh, that was the, the truck, uh, the vehicle proved invaluable in, in that call. Back to the little bit. Um, just I, one thing, just notice the equipment that's on there. Uh, just take a look at just basically some equipment, real simple setup. That's it. Tom, go next one. Next uh, that's just that's the group getting together. We had a wet down for to introduce the truck to all the people, and that's the people in Company One: guys, wives, uh, children me. that were helping out to celebrate that. Uh, some of us are in that picture. Lee's in it. Bill's in it. I'm in it. Uh, some of these people you might know. Let me, let me point, this is a, a good time as any. There were, for one and two, there were ladies auxiliary. 
two at the moment, I believe, not I believe, I know, still has an active auxiliary. And these ladies, I guess originally the whole thing was at the scene of a fire that the women would bring hot chocolate and sandwiches and so on. But they always pitched in, whether it be a pancake breakfast or whatever the occasion was. And as I say, to my, to my knowledge, I know Fuzzy just mentioned the other day, it's still active, maybe not as active as it used to be. Company ones at the moment is, uh, would have to be resurrected. But these ladies were, were very active in, uh, in, their, in their roles. I see somebody in there, Fran. Yes, sir. I see somebody in that one of those pictures. Yep. Mm -hmm. In the middle. Okay. Linda, Linda Dater's in there. Look a little older now. <laughs> well, you got taller. <laughs> next. That's our next rescue truck. Uh, we purchased it secondhand, again, from Union City, New Jersey refurbed it and used it for a while. And after we got rid of it, it's still used in what they, it uses a prop in the rescue, some rescue film, still used. I think they were still using it for a while. It's our first new rescue truck. Uh, now it's used as technical rescue one. We use it uh, in the back is Dive equipped for dive team, for the dive team, and technical rescue. Hundreds of feet of rope, and rigging, uh, for confined space, for, they're all, they're used in combination with each other, but we carry an awful lot of equipment for a lot of things. You know, it's interesting, when we, we had the dive team, was, which, I, not many fire departments have a dive team, I don't think. Ours is still active, but when it was just started there, one of the fun things we did is we all we went to Bermuda and uh, practiced our diving. We had to get in some warm water. Warm water. <laughs> in contrast to that original rescue truck with some of the equipment, this is some of the equipment that are on Rescue One right now. You can just see it's a generator, there are airbags, there are all kinds of crazy equipment that we use. Rabbit tool, toolbox, generators, all kinds of stuff. Next picture. This is the uh, extrication equipment. We have cutters, spreaders, rams. We have a duplicate setup on each side of the truck for handling extrication stuff. And the inside of the truck is set up. Scott packs for fighting for Fire, fighting fire. Uh, we have a pickup truck. We have a couple of trailers and a boat. So we use that pickup truck to get those around. And it carries some equipment also. There's the uh, museum caboose in the back there. <laughs> Next. What is that? That's our air ball. Uh, working down in Little Ferry bringing some people out from the flood situation, the woman with a wheelchair, and bringing that. Uh, there's an awful lot of training. Everybody has the training to keep up with. Uh, this is one of our, it's a training exercise that we did with a school bus. Uh, a flipped over school bus, how do we get people out? This is one of the methods trained for that. This is fire school, we're fighting vehicle fires, notice, air packs, uh, helmets, full equipment, confined space rescue, some of our equipment, we have a tripod, ropes, all kinds of crazy things. Trench rescue, we've got lots of equipment that we carry for trench rescue. Ventilate it, we've build the uh, safety around it before we rescue people. Dive team, working with North Jersey Search and Rescue with their dogs, looking for uh, the training with the dogs, looking for bodies. This training at the fire school with extrication. Old uniforms, 
fighting fire, rubber boots, uh, probably 50s, 60s, rubber boots, hoses, no air packs, uh, fire city, early fire city. Right our brothers, interesting fire. We thought we had it inside, pulled the ceiling, had the fire knocked down, didn't realize that there were three ceilings in it, and the fire was burning between <coughs> the top two, and it got pretty interesting when the ceiling starts coming down behind you, when you think you have the fire out. Another, we had another fire across the street from that at RZ Supply, it was in October of 1964, it was a really tragic fire because we lost 22 kegs of beer and 30,000 <laughs> cases of beer. Uh, so that, that goes down as a uh, one of the most tragic fires in Moa. <laughs> that was back in the day when Schaefer was the one beer to half. <laughs> and you know what they did? They buried that all. I found a news article. I didn't know this. They buried all those thirty thousand cases on um, at the end of uh, Reach, Reach Avenue. Avenue. Now they're going to be looking for I know. <laughs> That's why it grows so well. Stocks with that is the results of the Apex fire. I one of the 24 hours of it. It's a current fire, 28717 intersection. Some of the stuff we run into. It's a mutual aid fire. We're working with Rockland County and with Malwa, well, lots of Malwa units. And we work together with the surrounding towns on different things. This is a very bad accident. Uh, UBS truck on 17. That's, that's all the guys equipped with things now working on an extrication. That's a tough one. House fire. Condo fire. That's uh, one of those ones that, I don't know what he used the expression, but uh, when you look at it, it's an oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the first, that's in the first, that's what it looked like when it first got there. But it was confined to those units. There's a fire at the Bray, Company 2 working, Company 1, and confined to the unit that started it. That, that brush fire there, it just shows you how intense a brush fire can be. But it, it, it brings back uh, memories, you might say, of in November of 1964, the uh, uh, mountain was burning like that. And it took uh, the newspaper article that I researched out of here, and I was part of it at that time. Uh, it had, we had a thousand volunteers, not all firemen, but volunteers, people from the uh, priests from the seminary, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts. The fire just went from the New York state line all the way to the o Oakland. And I know Carol's here, uh, and um, it was in behind Fred Waring's house, and Carol's, Carol Waring Green here. And um, one of my jobs in that fire was to take the bulldozer and be breaking a fire break. And the only way we put the fire out is we had a, we actually started backfires. And you don't think about those things today. I don't that this type of fire can happen in mold, but it, it does. It did, and it, it was quite a. Uh, since then, we haven't had one as major like that. And I think the main reason is because we've improved so much in the amount of fire equipment we have and the amount of the way we attack it. So, um. There's a nice rescue. Guys are in their gummy suits and we use a small little boat with that. Uh, we get rescue somebody, put a life jacket on them and use the boat to pull it out, pull them out. Airplane crash, you, know, you get everything in ball walk. There's on the 17 opposite chart. Person was okay, so we're lucky. And we had to do some other activities as we go. That's a turkey bowl. Uh, touch football game on Thanksgiving. 
Little guys between one and two. Blood drive. We usually have an annual blood drive to work on some other things, the community stuff. Sparky. You know, fire prevention. Some fire prevention stuff. And we also get involved with demonstrating stuff to school kids and helping out with fire prevention stuff. And that's company Wawa Fire Department. 2014. Quite a change from that first original pumper to what we have now. Went from we went from roughly 25 members, and in here is about 150. And needless to say, a few more pieces of equipment also. This, of course, is all five all five companies. This is the, the whole department right now. The equipment. Good. We want to thank everybody. Um, I have a comment I'd like to make. Okay. What do you got there, Kurt? My wife and I are happy to live right up the block from Firehouse Number One. Is that and you're running a pretty you know, spit and polish operation, but I'm appalled to look at that Indian puppy. <laughs> so I'd like to give you mine. This has been waiting for a guy like you for a long time. A nice polished. We have a few minutes for some questions nice. for the panel to get them to elaborate on some of their stories. I'm sure they have a, a lot more stories. So, any questions from the audience? Yes. I grew up in Valley Stream, Long Island, and I've seen some of the books from that time. There were no paved streets in my town, and the railroad was raised at that time in 1925. You said in 1915 you put in fire hydrants in Mawa, or at least some of them, and I was wondering, your streets were unpaved, where did you run the pipes from, where was the water from, and how did they get pumped out? I can't imagine fire hydrants, I don't know where you... He, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> the first system he installed they, the first one. <laughs> the first system was up on the top of Wawa Road. Uh, they had a tank up there, and there were several wells up there. And that was the first tank that I know of. And they ran them down Miller Road, Airmont Road. I don't know how many hydrants they had when they first started, but they were... Uh, uh, overground pipes or underground pipes? Underground pipes, definitely. Underground pipes. When was Mawa's road, when were Mawa's road paved? In, in various stages. Mm -hmm. uh, I can recall in 47, for instance, the roads were, I don't know what you call the system, but it was a cross between a tar road and a dirt road. Yeah, right. They used to spread tar, and then they had a truck that came along, and, and then you they threw rocks or that, uh, basically, all right? Gravel. And then yeah. in, in, in the gravel, and in time, it became uh, a, a stiff, you know, a hard surface. Uh, but real macadam roads were probably, I'm going to say, uh, mid-50s. Yeah. The first road, Franklin Turnpike, was probably the first paved road. That's right, about 1908. 1908, there we go. Yeah. Part of it. Other questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned how much the older fire trucks cost in the old days. Uh, how does it vary now? <laughs> well, I'll tell you about I'll tell you about the, the Company Two pumper, not the one that nowadays, but the first one that they got. They paid it was six cost sixteen thousand dollars. And one of the things they the the firemen said when they were pro, when they were uh, at the town council meeting. It said this, they asked for a 50-foot ladder, and he said this ladder should prove adequate for any situation in the township. 
you guys here from Company 2, they now have two ladders, and as the town is growing, and they sort of chuckle, we chuckle when a 50-foot ladder was going to be adequate for the town. But it was 16000 Nowadays, the fire trucks are over, over half a million dollars or more. Wow. Randy Strabinski's here. He bought one in Ramsey. For how much was your truck, Randy? Uh, they were cheap, 520, 520,000 each. Okay. They're considered cheap. Cheap. Well, Ramsey's a little pleasure, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Other oh, questions? Yeah. Yes, Carol. Uh, how is it to make it involved? Getting involved. How is it to get yeah. Are your numbers bigger than they were before or, or about the same? You're still getting people who are willing to do this. We no, it really comes it, through yeah, when you talk to us. We struggle. It's it's hard to get recruits. You know, they, they have a junior program that they try to encourage the kids to get involved, and you know, we do get a few from them. You know, it kind of runs in cycles, like, and you know, you get some neighbors that get interested in some family members and stuff, and I, you know, family members, I think, is really what it's all about. You know, you look at company two and all the families that are in there. I mean, if you. I went to their communion mass. Um, they do it every year for their uh, deceased members, and I, I was amazed. And I think the one family there were six members, Gorgeous. right? Six members that were, you know, grandfathers and fathers and brothers and stuff that were there, and, and amongst other families too. And you know, you know, that's how it keeps going. And you know, the town does. We they do try to encourage it, it, people to join. They have uh, like a clothing allowance. They, there's a low sap program, which is a longevity program that that you know. Helps out a little bit, you know, not a lot, but a little bit. And there's a death benefit that the state provides uh, for the firemen. So there are a few things, but not nearly enough. That, you know, it's they do it out of the goodness of their heart, right? Our junior program has been very successful. Good, yeah. The, the you know, numbers have been up. High school, we recruit them to high school, and you get a couple of them in, and they bring a couple of their friends and a couple of their friends. And right now, I'm not sure how many. I will both count how many uh, juniors, but every company. As juniors right now, and they can actually at age 17 they can go through the fire academy. When they turn 18, they're already black hats, as we call it. Right. Come on, and that's been pretty successful. Keeping them in town is another issue, but uh, we do get them in though. We have quite a few young young guys. Yeah, that's a start. And we get a few from college. Yeah. So we, we we brought some things over. Please feel free to take a look at them. Ike does have these books up here. And again, you know they. they the museum has been so helpful. These these books, they actually go back to the uh, what they, 20s. It should be on the cover. Yeah. <coughs> this is like the 30s. You know, and these, these are the actual pages. But the museum uh, is helping us. Uh, we have these all now um, cataloged, I guess is the word, on the, the computers. And they, uh, they're all in the archive room now. So these, these records that, that we've been able to find it, it will last forever. Which is why you know keeps the, the past alive. Carol. Another question: Are most fire departments um, in New Jersey, say, or in the broader picture, volunteers. are most of them all volunteers? Are uh, there any paid fire departments? That's anywhere? a that's a good question. I, I couldn't honestly answer okay. that, but the majority of right, the well, head. Bergen County has <laughs> Teaneck, Hackensack, and Englewood. Ridgewood. Ridgewood. Paid. Ridgewood has volunteers also. It's a com combination department. The other three are fully paid. The rest of them are all volunteers in Bergen County. So, and the other thing is that uh, mutual aid. We are members of the Northwest Bergen Mutual Aid. 13 towns, 14 towns in it now. Uh, that we provide mutual aid for each other, uh, so we're covering for each other. It's Rand, Randy Sturbitsky was a member here, and lives, lives now lives in Ramsey, and just just finished being chief in the Ramsey Fire Department. We call on Ramsey all the time; they call on us all the time. It's uh, everybody helps each other out. You, know, you, you uh, that condo fire that we had here, uh, the first. I think the first duet, first engine on that thing was what an engine from Ramsey, a ladder from Suffer, and one of ours because we were coming back from another farm up on the mountain. So it's uh, everybody, everybody helps each other out. 
Yeah, yeah. One, one final question, uh, Tetsu. I guess, uh, how much towns have helped in development? Township buys all the equipment. Yeah, that's it. Township, yeah. township supplies all the equipment. How about like a, like a gasoline, that kind of stuff? Yeah, the township, the township pays. I mean, the, the fire department, the fire houses, you know, are the town. Mm -hmm. They, they own the, fire, the township owns them. And they pay for the electricity, they pay for the uh, fuel for the uh, engines. And the What's the annual budget for your department, number one? Nothing. Well, what do you want? Budget. Budget? It's not broken out. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a town, it's you know, town. The whole town for fire protection, I don't know. Yeah. Was he there? Right? I, I really couldn't answer that big question, that's to tell you the truth. Yeah, uh, the, the, right. the operating yeah. budget alone is, is uh, 250000 That's just to keep things operating. That's not buying, obviously, new trucks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That comes under a capital program that we long range out and plan ahead when we have to replace things and do things. Each firehouse has, is independent as far as its internal organization. And they run their own show as far as president and vice president and their own social end. Each company is individual and runs their own, and they have their own internal budgets. Uh, firehouses, like I say, are all by the town. But if a company wants to do some things inside the firehouse, they have to pay for that. Right. And they have to do that themselves. Right. Gary, you had a question? Yes. The girls would like to know, who designed, it's such a beautiful building, who designed, who designed company? Number one, the building, it's such a beautiful building. Committee, a committee. The first, the original. They didn't have an architect? Yeah, it was an architect. Yeah, we had worked with an architect, but there's a, there was a building committee that worked with the architect. The original building, company one, uh, was supposed to be a town, a town building for everything. Fire, fire and police were the original building that was built, it was supposed to be a circle in the middle that contained offices for the town, and the other end was supposed to be almost a duplicate of the firehouse, and it was going to be a library. The original, there were plans around that, I don't know where they are now, but for a while, didn't at one time I at one time, I, yeah, I saw the original plan. The courtroom and jail? Was yeah, they had the police department was there from uh, 1930 to 1958. The town hall was there from 1929 to 1958. The ambulance building, the, the original ambulance uh, department was 1947 to about 1980. You know, then they moved over to the, to the newer place then. And of course, now it's back to the fires. But the court, and I didn't have the dates of that, but I know the court, they held the court in there until... Uh, I'm going to say around uh, 1985, say. And then the court finally moved over to, when they moved out of the, the town hall, moved out of the Feldman building to uh, a corporate, corporate air. Yeah, part of rented there, right? The rented and corporate thing. And then somebody just said something there? Fortunately. Oh, the they, jail, yeah. I, the jail, they, the, the, there is, the jail is still there. And we do have that, uh, the bars for the jail and. You know, down in the dungeon. We used to have all the civil defense stuff there until, uh, you know, until the mice got too fat and we had to get rid of all the stuff. You know? <laughs> but the, uh, fortunately, they did not finish that total plan because, as you can see with the fire departments, the police department, the municipal building, the library, in the different places, it would have just never fit in that in that setup the way it was well we have uh, some refreshments here uh, and if you want to ask questions of the panel I'm sure they'll be around thank you again